It's cool. Afternoon, Tegan. Afternoon, Abby. Um, shall I just do a little introduction? My name's Paul Sheeran. I'm a chief exec of Scottish Engineering. It's a member association uh, representing the engineering manufacturing body in Scotland. Uh, and I'm really glad to be here today to answer some of your questions on my link with languages. So over to you, please. Um, I suppose the first and most obvious thing is, do you know any other languages other than English? Um, I do. Um, I do. So when I was at school, uh, I the main language I took was French and I did my French to Nat 5 level uh, and got a qualification uh, in that. Um, uh, but I also did a bit of German at school um, for a couple of years and then much, much later um, through work, um, the company I was with was actually bought by an Italian company. So I decided that it was time to learn another language. And so there nearly 30 years after I had last learned a language at school, I, I learned Italian um, and uh, still am. So would you like to learn any other languages in the future? Um, yes, I would. Um, I kind of learned, uh, I always learn little bits of languages wherever I go in the world. So if I'm if I'm heading on a plane when you know when I was doing that for work, um, if I was heading to South Korea, then I would learn how to say hello, please, thank you, um, and just the pleasantries wherever I went in the world, because I think that's really important um, to show that you're making an effort. Um, so I always had little bits, and I know that doesn't really count as learning a language, but um, you know that phrase of a little language always goes a long way uh, really works well in terms of making a connection um, uh, especially in business the language i'd quite you know i've quite got a i'd quite like to learn gaelic um i grew up in the north of scotland and i was kind of in the north of scotland i was kind of on the very top coast but the, the area i was in didn't wasn't a sort of native gaelic speaking or there wasn't a lot of gaelic speakers but if you only went 20 miles west the, it was heavily Gaelic speaking. And so we had the groups of pupils who came in every day um, uh, to the high school and spoke Gaelic. And I always just thought it sounded, I loved the sound of it. I think it's got a really lilt, um, good, a nice lilt. So yes, I'd quite like to learn a bit of Gaelic. So other than obviously like being polite for traveling, how has learning another language benefited you? So um, the, 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 the short and story on that is that I don't think I would have had the career that I've had if it wasn't for learning a language and specifically taking that language you know to to qualification at school and um, so uh, although you know I'm, I'm an engineer um, I did a degree at university but I, I struggled at university I was not good academically I took a very long time to get a fairly no not fairly a very mediocre degree uh, in electronic engineering and, and I got to a point where um, I actually needed to leave university and start working. Um, and I still had a couple of courses to finish in order to get my degree. And so uh, there was a job that I particularly wanted to get um, and applied for it. And one of the reasons that I, I was able to get that job was because most engineers didn't do any languages and they were looking for French language skills because the major contract um, for providing um, control system software um, was with a French contractor. And I not only had a French qualification that because I'd been away to French areas and had practiced my French, I was able to confidently say, yeah, my French is pretty decent. I can understand and follow a con conversation pretty well. I can speak okay, uh, but yeah, I was out in front against you know, people with much better academic qualifications than me. So I wouldn't have got the start in my career. And then later in my career, there was a significant role that I went for, which ended up leading to getting really quite senior roles, being man managing director and, and a vice president of the company. And they had a stipulation that anybody ar arriving in the company in a junior management position had to have a language qualification. And so once again, my Nat5 French got me through that gate and got me off and running into, you know, a really, well, it's been a great career, really a good gig overall. So obviously languages have helped you in your career. So how important do you think it is for people to learn a language nowadays? Um, I think it's more important than ever. Um, I think, um, you know, the world is, uh, is, a, is a relatively small place uh, and 
any the sort of businesses that that, that people will really enjoy working in are, are the sort where they are they're working internationally they their customers are not just in scotland they're not just in the uk they're around the world and in doing that um you know we all say that that the language is the kind of so language is the first route into understanding the, the culture of the com- of the country that you're that you're working with and understanding the culture is a way to communicating and making connections and making connections and how business runs so business looks like it's company to company but really business is people to people mm-hmm. and people to people relies on good communications and good connections uh, and so that ability to to connect with people comes from language um so more important than ever you know, for, for, for people who have got aspirations to have ambitious careers. So you mentioned before about how you did do a degree at university, but especially for careers like engineering, do you think university is the only pathway for after school? No, I don't. I don't for a minute. And I think school isn't for everybody. Uh, I've met people who are the, you know, heads of corporations, the managing directors, chief executives. Um, you know, people have gone on to have absolutely fantastic stellar careers who say, look, school didn't work for me. Uh, I didn't get any qualifications. Um, they've become truly excellent technical engineers and mathematicians but they don't have a nat five in maths and mm-hmm. um, for whatever reason that was whether it was the stage in their life or or just how how school worked for them it didn't work most of them went through what we would call a work-based learning pathway and a work-based learning is you start work and you're trained on the job and sometimes that's you know sort of slightly less formal training so people who start let's be honest working in retail but the so they're, they're working in a supermarket and the supermarket say you're better than that, we can move you to this and we'll move you to that, we'll move you into the management traineeship role and, and you move up through the organisation because you kind of find your feet and you you just excel in it and, and as a career. The other pathways in work-based learning are apprenticeships where you know you start and um, you know you have a four-year or three-year apprenticeship where you're taken through and at the end of that you're qualified in a certain way. Most of the people I know who've done that then springboard on to go on to management careers or, or as I say, even leading companies. So no, university is not the only way to go. It's totally valid too. Uh, you know, it's a great, great path for those who choose it, but it's not the only path. So um, moving back onto languages, do you think having another language is more or less important now with Brexit? Uh, so you have no surprises for me. Um, in light of Brexit, I think it's more important than ever. Um, so I um, try not to be too political here, but um, I'm not a big fan of Brexit. Uh, in fact, I'm not a fan of Brexit at all. Um, and I worry that Brexit, you know, to the outside world looking in at the UK, it makes us look small and insular and a little bit like I can almost I'm worried that it's a sort of unfriendly position to be to the outside world and I don't think anything can break that down faster than if you meet somebody from elsewhere in the world and they say hello to you in English and you reply with hello in Spanish or wherever you are in the world nothing's going to break that down more than making people feel like oh okay so of all the people in the UK who think in a certain way this isn't one of them and again it's about that making connection uh, and I think that has you know, huge benefits, whether it's in your personal life or whether it's in a business context. Uh, so, no, I think it's more important than ever to be able to learn a language. Now, for those who would say, yeah, but if I learn Spanish, well, well, that doesn't help me if I'm in, in Russia. But the point is, is that learning a first language is just a springboard to lots of others. Uh, and so if you learn one language, you get the confidence to say, I'm going to Russia. I learn how to say hello. I learn how to say goodbye. I learn how to say please and thank you and just some politeness. Um, and, and I know I'll get by and it'll help me. I'll, I'll, people will see I'm making an effort and I'll make that connection. So have you ever lived abroad? I have. I've been lucky enough to have lived abroad um, in a couple of places. The main main area that I lived abroad didn't really do much for me in terms of language skills, though, because I spent quite a bit of time in the US. I was... Um, My first job after university, I ended up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for just about a year, uh, which was really good. I was 23 years old and it's a really nice time to be out and uh, and I I 
don't think I'd been, I'd never been to the States before that and I hadn't travelled abroad very much at all. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and then I liked that so much that my wife and I went back and lived in Michigan for nearly two and a half years in the US. And a little story that goes with that is when we came back to Scotland, um, I, I was being interviewed for this job. And I kid you not, they said that they, they were interested in me because I was an engineer and they were looking for an engineer. Um, I'd lived in the US and although this job was based in Scotland, the projects were based in America. And I kid you not, the last thing they said, when we were looking for somebody who can speak American. So if you've done all those things, you should be able to do that. Um, the other places in the world. So I haven't like lived as an up stocked and bar, but I've like had apartments, been there for a few months at a time, living in Zurich in Switzerland, uh, in Xiamen in China, in Tokyo in Japan. And actually, I was back in Boston uh, in the United States again, and I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, which was really interesting. Actually, I was there for quite a while. I was there for about nine months. So, yeah, my career's has given me a chance to travel around the world and, and stay in some nice places. Would you ever live abroad again? Absolutely. Um, I just need to get rid of these children um, and <laughs> get them to fend for themselves. And me and my wife are off off to spend their inheritance. <laughs> uh, so what made you go into engineering? Um, so I think it was pretty obvious that engineering was for me for a very lo uh, kind of young age. I, I always liked taking things apart. I was kind of a child that would, you know, so able to fix their own bike from pretty early age. Uh, I, make torches out of batteries, bits of wire and light bulbs, that kind of stuff. Um, I was well known in my own uh, family for, um, I electrocuted myself for the first time when I was eight years old. Um, I was taking the light switch in my bedroom apart to try and work out how it worked. Um, I managed to fuse the whole house, give myself a good fright. Um, but yeah, I was kind of pretty drawn. For a while, I was really, I was really interested in doing medicine as well. Um, but I think for the same reason, I think I just wanted to understand how this thing all worked um but it, in the end electrical and electronic engineering was the thing for me and that that really drew me in um as i say i think it's about understanding how things work and i think there's another thing about engineering which is i think engineering essentially is a force for good um engineering is the thing that's improved our lives you know over centuries um for the situation we're in as a planet with a climate emergency it will be engineers who give us the tools that get us out of that whether that be you know hybrid hydrogen battery buses and cars or you know ways of of cleaning up the atmosphere that we've got it'll be engineers that will deliver those, those those things as we are just now because whilst it'll have been biochemists who developed the the um the technology for the vaccines that we're all getting against coronavirus it's engineers who are producing them at the rate of millions per day so that we can get the vaccination program ro rolled out and at the rates that they are so you mentioned before about how long it is of helped you get into your job so do you think they've helped you get into the position you're in now with another languages absolutely for the reason that i gave i mean i gave two examples I don't think I would have got that first chance because I didn't deserve that job because I hadn't got a degree and I was going to work on I was going to work on on the design team for a nuclear power station and they pretty much need people who so they took me on the on the on the proviso that I would finish it and remember I got it because none of the other engineers you know had got a, a language qualification and I did and then that second one when I came back from the states you know they were looking and said look we only hire people who've got, a, you know, a language qualification. And what's interesting about that, why did they say that? And they said it because, so it was a company based in Scotland. Uh, they made film, sunglasses uh, and uh, cameras, but their, their customers were in 62 countries around the world. So, you know, they, what they needed were people who were willing and able to connect with people all over the world. And they saw that the route to doing that was through languages, because if you've learned a first language, a second language, then you get to understand culture, you understand how to communicate and connect with people. Uh, and that's absolutely essential for doing business around the world. So do you think you obviously the languages have got you into the position you're in, but do you use them in your job? So I don't use them so much now. Uh, the, the the role I'm in now is um, 
it is more Scottish based. Um, but up until a couple of years ago, um, I was spending about 50% of my life um, in Italy, uh, in northern Italy, in a place called Padova. Uh, and so that was that's a great way of learning a language is you're literally dropped in and um, <laughs> either learn to speak or it's very difficult to eat at night. So um, that was a good way of doing that. And before that, you know, uh, it's interesting. So we had quite a strong French team in in the team of Polaroid, and uh, we had an office in France. So I got to use my la- language skills there. Um, Zurich in Switzerland, Swiss speak a kind of variant on German. Well, they actually speak both. They can speak High German, they speak Swiss German. And um, so I suppose my German at school probably came back to help me a little bit there um, to to be able to use it. But as I said earlier, I pretty much try to learn a little bit and make a little bit go a long way wherever I can. So, you know, in the old days, that would be getting a phrase book uh, and working through it. And then once we got smartphones, I would use smartphone app. And so wherever I was going, I'd download an app, sit on the plane and try and work out a few key, key phrases so that I could could make connections when I landed. So if you could go back in time, is there anything you would have done differently? Um, so I... I try to avoid the go back uh, in time one. I, I'm not sure that's really good for us, you know, and I think we're all aware and this last year has been tough. So looking after mental health is good. Uh, and I think sometimes going back and you can wallow in things and look over things too much. So I try and avoid that as a, as a general rule of thumb. There is one, though, that I would have done earlier in my life. So I had a really good boss um, who had a phrase which was about turning up. And when he said it, he didn't mean turn up in the physical sense, as in like, just be here on time. It was about when you're in a place and there's nowhere else you can go for the next hour or the next day or the next week, then really put your effort in. And and even if it's not something you, you in heart of heart you love, but if you don't, it's just a wasted opportunity. So if you give the example, if you were sitting in a classroom for a subject that you knew you weren't going to take it through the end of the year and so do a qualification, the, you know, the tendency could be easy just to drift away and just not, you know, put your whole effort in. But it's a waste. It's just a, such a waste of an opportunity because you, you can't go anywhere else. You can't stand up and walk out of the classroom. Neither of the can teach her, no matter whether they felt like it or not. So everybody has to turn up, you know, to, to make it valuable. And so why do you do that? So probably the best, best reason for doing it is because it becomes a habit and it becomes a habit that when you really need it, when you need to arrive in a situation and just like that, turn up and really switch on, put absolutely everything into it, it's second nature to you. Um, and I think there's a secondary benefit to it, which is I think it is one of those things that makes you a happier person. Because when you come away from something where you've sat for a day or an hour and you didn't just you just didn't engage, you hid somewhere in the you know back and just kind of kept out of the way. I, I don't think it makes you feel kind of very fulfilled uh, whereas if you put your whole heart into everything um it, you do now, i wish i'd done that earlier in my life so that's the one thing i look back i learned that lesson sometime in my 20s i wish somebody had taught me that lesson i don't know at primary school <laughs> <laughs> um i would have got a big benefit out of it so um our school are currently picking subject choices and what would you say to the young people that are reluctant to take the language in school so so the first thing I would say is is that um, if you've ever heard the phrase or somebody in your life has said to you, why do you want to learn a language? Because everybody in the world speaks English anyway. It's not true. I can out honestly, hand on heart, say from all the places in the world I've visited, it's not true. And it's neither true nor helpful. And the second thing is, is that learning a language makes your brain more agile because it's, t- it's tough. It's not easy. Um, and so, you know, if you're in that situation where, where you've tried to speak a language, you understand how hard it is to trans translate what somebody's saying into your language, work out what you want to reply with, translate it into the language you want to speak in, and then say it back. That makes your 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 brain more flexible. There's another bit to that, which is you know talk about agility. And um, I often said that the next learn language I learned after um, after French was Italian. It, looking back from the experience when I learned Italian, it wasn't. The second learn language I learned after um, after French was computing science programming. Um, and what I saw looking back at it was when I learned French, I learned, okay, 
there's structure, there's grammar, syntax, there's order. The words go in a certain order. Um, there are rules about pronunciation. And when I started programming, you know, it's, it's structure, there's grammar, there's syntax. The words, the order of the words are very important. Um, there are rules not dissimilar to the pronunciation thing. And so, and that's where my career took me. I, I, I ended up, that's what I liked in ele electronic engineering was the, the programming side. So learning French enabled my brain to be more agile. I became quite good at that. And so even though I've been honest about I wasn't good academically, I was pretty good at that. And that's one of the things that got my career on as well. And I think the language can open it up. So I think it's an enabler for lots of different things, you know, and, and I would say to any young person, what harm can it do to do that to at least not five? And then at that choice, you know, maybe you'd go on to higher or maybe not, but, but at least do it to that point where you've got a better, deeper le le learning in the language. So on the flip side of that, is there any advice you'd give to students who are keen to continue studying languages at university? So I, I think I think it's a fabulous thing to do, you know, if you've got ambition for a really good career uh, is what I'd say to people who are considering to do that, because organisations are looking for the kind of people who've done languages at, 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 at university. And why are they doing that? It's because they're looking for people who understand what it means to to connect internationally. Um, and so these these companies that have got international ambitions um, they will pull people in and they will use their wider skill sets. But first and foremost, those, those language skills are the ones that will interest them in the, in the first place. You know, so I, I think, um, you know, there's just there's tons of examples. And I've come across lots of people in really senior positions in organisations, particularly where there's some element of communications, because becoming good at communicating in, in a second language I think makes a better communication than your first language in English. So they, those sort of, sort of people tend to be com good communicators. And that's the reason why, you know, companies with ambition come looking for them at the end of their university degree. Well, that's the last of our questions. Uh, thank you so much for doing this with us. It's been great. You're more than welcome. I really, really enjoyed uh, uh, meeting you both. Um, I wish you really well for your careers, whether that's in languages or not. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that's a real success for you. Thank you, Thank you. very much for your Thank time. You.